Well, welcome everyone to our 2020 X-Celebration training camp. I'm Jane Caruso. I am your Region 7 XL chair. And today we're going to talk a little bit about judging. Let's put you in the judging seat. So grab that blue jacket or blue sweater and put it on and let's talk a little bit about judging. So I'm going to share a little information with you and then I'm going to ask you to make some judgment calls. Okay, so the first thing I want to share with you is these cheat sheets. That's what the judges call them. Um, there's one for every event, and it has pretty much everything about that event right there on it. So this is an example of the bars, and let's say you're a gold athlete and you got done competing. That judge is going to put her head down now at her paper, and she's going to look at those four requirements and say six A's, yes. Skill in clear supported horizontal, yes. 360, yes. And a dismount off the high bar, yes. So assuming that nothing else on this paper is wrong and she hasn't done anything she's allowed to, we'll have our 10 start value. So this is something you might wanna have in the gym so you all can start judging each other and making sure everything is there. The other piece I'd like you to have is the additional skills chart. Now you may do almost everything in the Excel code of points, depending upon your division, you can't do ease. Um, but there's not a lot of things that bronze and silver athletes can do. So we added some skills that they can do. So these are outside of the code of points. These are extra things that they're allowed to do. And if you'll notice, if you move your eye from the left column all the way to the right, you'll see that there's less and less additional skills available to you. So most of them are in the bronze and silver division. The one thing I want you to key in on here is the dismounts. If you look under silver, you'll see a tap swing forward with a half turn. And you'll also see that in the gold division, but you will not see it in the platinum division. So. One of the biggest mistakes that we see here in our region and across the country is the platinum athlete continuing to do that tap swing forward half turn dismount. It is no longer allowed. So if you have friends in the gym that are platinum and they're doing that, make sure you alert them to this chart. Okay. Let's talk about silver vault. The silver athlete has two choices. She can do a handspring over the mat stack or she can do a quarter to half turn onto the mat stack and land facing the mat stack. Any other twisting is void. That means they get a zero, no score. So that's big. If the gymnast has spotted, that's okay. She just gets a one point deduction. If the arms are bent so much that the head touches the mat, that's a two point deduction. So that's pretty big too. If the athlete lands, sitting or lying on top of the mat stack with her weight, her body in support at the top of the mat stack, it is void, no score. If she hits her head or her body part on the mat stack in the after flight as she's coming over, that's two tenths. So look at those last two things, because that's a huge difference. Um, if they land sitting or lying in support, it's void, but if they just hit on the way over, it's two tenths. So, I'm going to show you some silver vaults and I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to ask you to score it, like give me a score, but I'm going to ask you if this vault should be scored or if it should be voided. Okay, let's take a look at our first silver oopsie, number one, and you tell me after you've seen it if you believe this is a void vault or a scored vault. Okay, so if you're going to score that ball, show me a thumbs up. And if you're going to void it, show me a thumbs down. Okay, so most of you got it right. This is a void. She landed definitely with weight on top of the table, so we're going to void this vault. Let's look at oopsie number two and see what this young lady has to show us. Okay, so now you're the judge, you have to make a call. Did she land with weight on top of the table or did she hit it going over? So if you're going to score this and just take two tenths deduction, put your thumbs up. 
And if you're going to avoid it, show me a thumbs down. Okay, so let's take a look at this next slide. When you're really judging, you don't ever have the opportunity to see a vault again or any skill again. You don't have the opportunity to watch it in slow motion and you sure don't get a still shot like this. But I'm wondering if this changed anybody's mind. So if anybody said they would score it, would looking at this picture of how she landed on top of the table change your mind? Because I think if we saw this, we would probably avoid it. Okay, example number three. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so what do we do with that? Thumbs up if you're going to score it. And thumbs down if you're going to avoid it. Okay, so let's cheat a little bit and take a look at her. This is actually how she made contact with the mat. Okay, so she's in her afterflight. So I'm thinking this would be a nice example of a two tenth deduction, but we also are going to take five tenths for a fall because she really, um, if you watch the end of it, she really landed falling um, against the mat stack. Okay, oopsie number four. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, you have to make a decision. Did she land with weight and support on top or did she just hit it going over? Two tenths deduction, show me a thumbs up. And if you want to avoid it, show me a thumbs down. Okay, so this is a close call and this is what judging is all about. So even if I show you, I'm sorry, even if I show you where she contacted the table, it's still hard to decide if that was just a hit and bounce off the end of the mat there or if she was actually in support of the table. So it's your call. Whatever you decided is okay with me. Okay, oopsie number five. Okay, so what do you think about that? Do we score that? Thumbs up. Is there a reason to avoid it? Thumbs down. Okay, let's take a look at what happened here. If you remember, the first thing we talked about when we talked about silver vaults was one of those things was hitting your head or bending your arms so much that your head was on the mat stack. So that's a two point deduction. That's big, but it's not a void. And then if you look at how she landed, she does, I think that's really a pretty good picture of hitting the mat stack on the way over. So we would take two tenths for that. So two points and two tenths means the highest score she can get is a 7.8. Okay, let's look at our final silver oopsie. Oh dear, what do we do there? Okay, think about what you saw and tell me if you are going to score it with a thumbs up or void it with a thumbs down. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so she did call and she did perform a front handspring. You can see that is exactly how she came onto the mat. She didn't do the quarter to half on vault. She came on forward. So another rule that we learned earlier is that no additional turn is allowed. So if you said void, yes, you're correct. We would void this. Okay, another thing that's really, really important for you to do as a judge is to count your skills, especially important on bars and beam. So let's look at this gold routine. Her special requirements are six A's, so we have to count six skills, and they have to be A's. Um, she needs a horizontal skill, so that could be a cast to horizontal, could be a clear hip circle that comes out at horizontal. She needs a 360 degree circle, and she has to do her dismount off the high bar. So I'm gonna let you count the skills that you see. Here we go.
Okay. So, how many did you see? Okay. She did a pullover for 1A. Then she did a cast that did not go to horizontal, so that would be not an A, so we can't count that. Then she did a back hip circle, that's an A. Then she did a cast to squat on, that's an A. So we've got three so far. So then she did a jump to the high bar, tap swing forward, counter swing back, that's her fourth A. And then she did the tap swing dismount, that's her fifth A. Okay, so that's important because just because she missed that one horizontal skill, she's losing two special requirements. If that skill went to horizontal, she would have her six A's, but it didn't. So she's going to miss five tenths for not having six A's, and she's going to miss five tenths for not having a horizontal skill. So she's going to start at a 9-0 start value. So you want to watch each other if your goals and make sure that you have the right number of skills. Now, this is easy to fix, at least to a 9-5. All she has to do is add one more skill, and that might be a glide swing to a stand before she does her pullover. Then she's at least got six skills, and she could get a 9.5 start value while she's still working on that cast to horizontal. So important to count your skills. We're also going to watch out for those extra swings because they sneak in there and sometimes you don't even know they're there. So let's watch this first young lady do a little routine here and I want you to think about extra swings, what they are, and how many you see if you see any. Okay, did you see any? Because there was one and it was right after the back hip circle. So back hip circles, it's tough to not get an extra swing unless you just keep going forward and under swing um, after that back hip circle. Now remember these extra swings only apply to platinum and diamonds. So if you're gold or silver or bronze, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's look at one more. She's a platinum also. Okay, did you see any there? You should have seen two. So she did one after the long hang pullover, her legs went forward and then she went backward into the cast for the back hip circle. And then she had another swing after the back hip circle. So if you're a platinum or a diamond, you really need to look out for those extra swings. Now, did you know that judges actually have protractors in their glasses? So if you want to judge, you better go buy yourself a pair. And we need them to measure leaps, jumps, hops. We need them to measure bar casting and vault repulsion and how a clear hip circle finishes. So let's put our protractors in our glasses and take a look at some angles. Okay, the first angle we're going to look at is repulsion. So that means where is the athlete's body when her hands leave the table? So if she's straight up and down, there's no deduction. If she's horizontal, it's five tenths. And then if she's in between, it's somewhere in between five tenths and nothing. Okay. So I'm going to show you this one um, vault and all I want you to do is pay attention to her repulsion. So where her body angle is when her hands leave the table. That's what I want you to visualize. Okay, so have it in your mind where you think her body was when her hands left the table. And that's where she was. You can just see your hands leaving the table now. And if I put my lines back up, She's not quite five tenths, but she's probably three and a half or four tenths, okay? So that's a really sizable deduction. So you wanna watch each other in the gym and practice judging this particular part of a vault. Let's take a look at one more. She's gonna do a handspring on with a half turn off. And same thing, all I want you to do is focus on that angle of repulsion. Get your protractors ready. Okay, so what'd you think of that one? Thumbs up if you thought it was a little better. 
than the first? Thumbs down if you thought it was the same or worse. Okay, so here she is when her hands leave the table. So she's, she's better than the first one. Okay, is it perfect? Well, let's put up our lines and see. So she's not off right there at vertical, but she's close. So that would just be a one-tenth deduction. Okay, so if you're going to be judging, you want to get your eyes used to looking at these angles. Okay, a very, very important angle is the cast or the clear hip finish angle on bars. Okay, so we're just going to watch these two young ladies do a cast. And it's right away, it's right in the beginning of the routine. Um, as a judge, you're going to draw a line from the athlete's shoulder to the lowest body part. Okay, so keep that in mind when you watch this cast. Now, she's a platinum, so her cast her cast has to be above horizontal. Doesn't have to be a lot above horizontal, but it has to be above horizontal. So let's take a look at the first young lady. Okay, did y'all catch that cast? What did you think? Thumbs up if it's above horizontal, thumbs down if it didn't make it. Okay, let's take a look and see who's right. Okay, so there she is. Okay, I'm gonna draw my line from the shoulders through the lowest body part. And she is above horizontal, not a lot, okay? And it's hard to see when you first start judging, it's hard to see, but she is above horizontal. Okay, let's look at our second young lady. Okay, what'd you think of that cast? Above horizontal or not? Thumbs up if you thought it was. Thumbs down if you thought it wasn't. Okay, let's take a peek at where she was. Okay, so there's her cast. And looking at her heels, she sure does seem above horizontal, doesn't she? But let's draw our line from the shoulders to the lowest body part. Okay, so she's really not above horizontal. So that's a tough thing. You have to make your eye learn how to look for that angle because even though it looks like those heels are up there, that line that you draw shows that she is not. Okay, another thing we look for on for angles is uh, whether someone is vertical or not. And it's important on balance beam because there is no deduction for being almost there, okay? You're either vertical or you are not. So there's a lot of close calls in judging to see if folks are in vertical. Now this is really important mainly for gold. And what we wanna do is see if the hips are over their shoulders and a stretched body line. So that's what you have to look for. Are the hips over the shoulders and a stretched body line? It doesn't matter where the feet are. It matters if the hips are over the shoulders. So let's look at this first handstand. Okay, so that's kind of a close call. You kind of wish you could just push it over a tiny bit more, but looking at it, I do think her hips are over her shoulders. And it might be a little um, confusing because that second leg's not up there, but that's her most vertical part of the skill. And I think she probably is just right there where she needs to be. Okay, so let's look at another example. Okay, are you seeing a stretched line from the hips to the shoulders? And are the hips over the shoulders? Yes, they were. So if you're gold and you need a vertical skill, that will count for you. Okay, let's look at one last example. Okay, again, did you see a stretched body line with the hips over the shoulders? And I think you probably did. So that is also another way that a gold can achieve vertical. Doesn't always have to be a cartwheel or a handstand or a back walkover. There's other ways that you can do that. So another really important way to use our protractors is to measure the kick angle in between two skills in a series. We see a lot of platinums and diamonds starting to do series. They might do cartwheel, cartwheel, or handstand cartwheel, or 
handstand swing through to a round off or, or any kind of connection like that where there's a foot lift in between the two skills. So note that as a judge, you have to watch that kick angle. It cannot be higher than 45 degrees or the series is broken. So take a look at the little chart here. You'll see what 45 degrees looks like. 90, of course, is horizontal. That's way too high. Um, we don't want it to be above 45 degrees. So let's watch this young lady. She's going to show us a cartwheel cartwheel and we're going to decide if her kick was at 45 degrees above or below. Okay, so what did you think of that kick angle? Did you think it was higher than 45 and you would break it? Or did you think it was lower than 45 and it's okay? Let's take a look at something that will help us. Okay, there is her kick angle. That's as high as her foot went. And if I put my protractor on top of it, it is 60 degrees. So even though you might have really liked that series, it's broken. Okay, it didn't look like she stopped or slowed down too much, but that angle right there, that's the rule. It was more than 45 degrees, so we're gonna consider that broken. Okay, another thing we need to check with our protractors is the angles in the leaps. And there's a lot of angles to learn here, okay? A silver has to leap on beam to 90 degrees. So picture what 90 degrees is in your head and tell me if you think she hit 90 degrees or not. Okay. Thumbs up if you think she hit 90. Thumbs down if you think she did not. Okay, so she hit 78. Okay, so this is the biggest split that she showed us. So she can get credit, she can get her A, but she's gonna lose a deduction. She's gonna lose a 10th for not being split enough, but she will get credit. Okay, so golds and platinums, they have to leap to 120. So think about what 20, what 120 should look like in your head, get that visual picture going, look at your protractor if you need to and figure out what 120 is and tell me if she reaches it. Okay, was that your image of a 120? Okay, yes or no, let's um, take a look. Okay, so there she is at her widest split and that measures with my real protractor at 130 degrees, so she is fine. Okay, we have one more to look at. Let's look at this diamond athlete she needs to be 150. So if you look at that picture of 130, this diamond's got to be 20 degrees bigger. Okay, let's see if we make it. Okay, so what did you think of that split? Thumbs up if you gave it 150, thumbs down if you didn't. Okay, so here she is at her widest split. My angle, my protractor measures the angle at 155. So she's just sneaking it in there and she is fine with this split. Okay, the last angle we're gonna talk about is turn angles. And this is tough. Um, this is a bronze athlete and she has to do a half turn on one foot. So in order to get credit, she's got to turn more than halfway around. So 90 degrees would be halfway around from 180 for her. So she has to hit 91 degrees in order to get credit. Okay, now when you're looking at turns, you have to pay attention to when the heel lifts off the floor and where the heel is when it lands, when it returns to the floor. So I'm gonna watch, ask you to watch this athlete. She's gonna come right into our corner here. So you're gonna to have to look close. You'll feel like you can't see it, but you can. Um, she's going to do her dance passage and then she's going to do her half turn right into the corner. So tell me how far around you think she got. Here it comes. Okay, so did you watch? 
where she started and where that heel landed at the end of her half turn. Let's take a look. Okay, so you can see her body's pretty much twisted almost all the way around, almost halfway. But we're not looking at the body, are we? We're judges. We're looking at her feet. Okay, so if I'm looking at where that heel dropped to me, boy, that's pretty much right there at 90 degrees. So I have to decide if it's really 91 degrees or 90 degrees. And this is tough because if you see those judges sitting all the way across that table, they may see it one way. And if there's a judge sitting right behind her where you are, you might see it another way. So sometimes that's why scores are different and that's okay. That's why we try to always have two judges. Okay, last example of a turn. We're going to look at a full turn this time and the young lady's on balance beam. So in order for her to get credit, she has to go just a little bit past three quarters of the way around. So there's a little diagram there. Start in the blue, the dark blue is where she turns and that's where she has to end to be three quarters. Now she's got to be just a smidge past that. Okay, so I can tell you that this young lady is going to do her full turn facing the audience. Okay, so we're going to watch and see if she makes it. Now, you can kind of figure out that if she's three quarters of the way around, she'll be facing that Florex mat. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so did she make it three quarters of the way around? Thumbs up. Or did she not make it three quarters of the way around? Thumbs down. Okay, she actually has to make it one degree past three quarters, but... Think if she did it or not, get that in your head and we'll take a look. Okay, so this is where that front foot drops or back foot dropped pretty much at the same time, uh, but it's the front foot that we're looking at. So you can see she did get a little bit past facing that Florex mat. She did turn around a little bit more than three quarters. So if you awarded that turn, you were good. Okay, so. Thank you for watching this. I hope you are ready for a great day. And I hope some of you are ready to take that judging test and throw out some tens for your teammates. Okay. All right. Thanks, ladies. It was great chatting with you. And I'll see you again later on today.